Greetings. Welcome to In Conversation with Trevor, brought to you by Heart and Soul Broadcasting Services. I go beyond the headlines and beyond the sensational. Today I'm in conversation with Nyasha Joe, a chartered accountant and retired business executive. If you enjoy this episode, remember to subscribe, to like, and share. Nyasha Joe, welcome to In Conversation with Trevor. Thanks, Trevor. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. What a, what a pleasure to have you here. We had you here for um, the masterclass when um, we joined you in celebrating the ICAS uh, centennial, centennial and you were as well launching the book. I think I will start exactly there. Um, you, you've played this huge role. In, the, in ICA's Institute of Chartered Accounts, accountants celebrating their 100 years. Mm -hmm. Two weeks ago, we were at the ICA's uh, headquarters uh, celebrating 105 years. You talk to us about the inspiration behind, let's celebrate the ICA's 100 years by producing this amazing book that you, 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 you put out. Trevor, 100 years, in existence is a remarkable achievement yeah. for any organization, be it sports, be it uh, institutional, be it corporate and other. It's a huge achievement. And sadly, more often than not, we don't celebrate what we should be celebrating. Good times come far and wide. Mm. Bad times are always there and we tend to miss so for me, this was an opportunity to celebrate a success story mm -hmm. passed on from one generation to another, from one group, cultural group to another, and to see an institution that is excelling in the midst of the difficulties that we have in the country, in the region, and globally. So it was a wonderful opportunity to serve an institution that I admire and cherish. It, it couldn't have been easy um, doing this project. It couldn't have been easy convincing everybody to say, let's do this. Because you, like you're saying, yeah. times are tough. People have things to do. And uh, celebrating 100 years when I need mm. to look at the bottom line, yeah. talk to me about the, challenge, the challenges and the hurdles. I, I need to say, Trevor, twice before, the Institute wanted to write a book and it failed, it collapsed. One out of funding, two out of either lack of interest. But I resolved that I was going to make it work. Mm. I'd invested so much time in relationships, both in business and in the profession. And therefore, equally to convince two presidents with a great difficulty, to convince them that the project was possible. And finally, when one president said, Mkoma, go for it, mm -hmm. I went for it with the, all my mighty and reconnected with the, the relationships that I'd built over the years and the project became doable. What is it that you were seeing that these other people were not seeing? When I was, I was looking at the issue of celebration, Trevor, like I, like I indicated, often we don't celebrate each other. Mm. We tend to pull each other down. And this, for this institute to attain 100 years, to have 52% of its membership acceptable as chartered accountants of high repute globally mm. is a story to tell. And this institute has turned ordinary boys and girls who came into high school either with one pair of shoe and uh, only a pair of shorts, you have become global executives that are being sought after by global, the top uh, 500, Fortune 500 companies are looking for chartered accountants that were Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. This was a story to tell about Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. 
mm. in the world. Mm. And you, it was a joy. You, you, have, you have launched activities, yeah. Nyasha, to, to celebrate the centenary. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and basically to create momentum around uh, c- celebrating and yeah. creating and nurturing new young chartered accountants. Yeah. Talk, talk to us about that in a nutshell. I, I'll tell you, as part of the research, we asked the very simple questions, Trevor. What high school did you go to? What university, what accounting firm did you train with? And where are you now? And it came dawning that in, in, the, in the survey that no chartered accountant, current chartered accountant, had gone to a school in Matebele and North. Hmm. None. Although they may have been born there, parents born there, but no school in Mat North had produced a chartered accountant. Just for me, it was heartbreaking. Why? I, I'm not sure why, but you know what? It, it was heartbreaking. Mm. And I said, you know what? Why don't you, as part of the launch, take accounting back to the people, to the community? Go launched in the 10 provinces. Speak about accounting. On the back of integrity, our whole theme, launch theme was integrity is possible. Mm. Integrity can be taught. Young men and women can be taught to be men and women of integrity. And by so doing, you can change your community. Mm. So we took the launch to 10 provinces, meeting young men and women. You know, government calls them pupils. You know, went to meet pupils and it was eye-watering in incidences. Mm. You you are um, an example of... uh, I think one of the best icons of the profession. And I want us to go to um, your life journey, which I find very inspirational. What have been the deciding moments in your life, the moments that uh, have shaped the person that you have become, the moments that directed you to where you, you are right now? I think I need, Trevor, to give credit to my parents who had just done five years of school. By the way, my father opened a school, which is still running today, after Standard 3. But uh, my parents had such a desire for high-quality education that I went to a top boarding school. That boarding school brought students from Botswana, from Zambia, from Mozambique, for what was called upper primary school. And so one moment was to be sent to this boys boarding school was eye opening. Mm. You learn to cope as a young man amongst these boys and you learn to become a man. And two, I went into high school. Which high school did you go to? I went to to Chegato High School. Chegato, yeah. Again, run by the church. And, and did very well in my O-level and wanted to go to university, to A-level and go to university. Then to study geography, which was good in geography. But uh, come 1971, a long time ago, there was the Pierce Commission on the yes or no vote. Uh, Douglas Hume was running that, mm. if you remember. And being uh, and having just done my O-level, we were advocating for the no. But in the process, the civil structures of male, uh, male systems, bus networks were affected. Paralyzed. Paralyzed. And there was no communication. So when the results came, uh, allocated to go to Gormonzi High School, I couldn't go to Gormonzi because the letter never came. By the time we attained the normalcy, the places that had been allocated. And I got a place uh, in Mzilikazi, for the first time, tried to go to a day school for, mm. my, for my high school. I tried for a week. And I couldn't. <laughs> and I resolved to go back home. And said you, you, it found it, you found it uh, strenuous. Yeah, exactly. Catching a bus. To, talk to me. Share, share let, that let journey. Tell. Yeah. In a boarding school, all I did was to walk <laughs> less than 400 meters every day from church, dining hall, to school, and other. This time I had to walk 10 kilometers to school every day. 
in the morning and end of day by bus and on foot. And that was too much for It you. was just too much for me. It wasn't <laughs> in my system. I just couldn't cope. So I actually said, Dad, sorry, I can't do it. And decided, thought about studying on my own. But my dad said to me, mm -mm, you won't make it. Because I'd got a place to train as a teacher at go to teacher's college, which I didn't want. But my dad said, if I was you, mm. if I was you, I would take the opportunity. You can always improve yourself. And he pointed a few people around. Mm. We had gone the same route. I sold these mombes, two mombes, gave me money, bought me a lovely blazer, bought me a watch and said, here you are, the choice is yours. Stay at home or go to teacher's college. And I, as a good son, I listened to my dad and I have no regret. Which, which teacher's college was this? Guero Teachers, Teachers College, College which yeah. is now the MSU. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and um, when did you decide you wanted to, to be an accountant? Well, yes, I was at Guero Teachers College uh, training to be a math and science teacher. There was opportunity for the societies, clubs and other. And I went into the business club where we invited business people to come, we went into industry. I remember going to Zima Lois, to Bata, to Deft Whited, just to understand. Sort of business. career guidance of yes. some sort, yeah, isn't it? Basically, yeah. Mm. And, and uh, while it's the, we, it, it was really extracurricular if you wanted it, I began to like business and accounting and actually started uh, bookkeeping on my own, just out of interest with the South African Institute. But it opened my door, my eyes, my mind into accounting. So that when I went to teach and was looking to study A level on my own, I decided to study geography because I was good at it, economics mm. and accounting. Mm. And that is how and that's how I became a chartered accountant. Because as soon as I got my results and got a place and went to the UZ, I knew decisively I wanted to become a chartered accountant. And I registered, and that's how it began. You did teach, though. Yes. To talk, me, talk to me about yeah. the, your teaching experience and yeah. where you taught after after finishing at Gweru Teachers College. I taught in Bulawayo at a school called Sobukazi, uh, under the leadership of uh, Mr. K. P. Duga. I remember that very well. He was a wonderful man. He found us accommodation. Got, I mean, a young man getting a two-room flat. They were not plastered, but two-bedroom flat, a lounge, a kitchen, and uh, a bath was, uh, I mean, really, <laughs> was, was uh, entering the market in a yeah, different place. Yeah, as if you were back in boarding again. Exactly. But, yeah. but, but uh, it was a wonderful environment, which mm. allowed me to mature, to grow, but also afforded me the opportunity. Mm. to pursue my desire to go to university. Mm. And, and, and that desire, yeah. the, the, I think that's, yeah. that's something that runs through your life, yeah. the discipline yeah. and the hunger for education. Right. Coming from a family where your parents had uh, five years in education, yeah. <laughs> where, where, where do you find the grounding for that? Let me tell you, Trevor, something that I forgot to say earlier on. As early as grade standard one, which was the third year in school, I was made a timekeeper by the headmaster. The headmaster was my teacher. And there was only one big clock in the classroom. And at every 30 minutes, I needed to go out to a, a high place and ring the bell. It was a huge honor. I'm not sure why <laughs> I was assigned. And by the way, Trevor, I hardly never ever miss an appointment. Time management with no watch is ingrained in me. But just watching that headmaster giving me responsibility, but also knowing people in our community who had been to university, who were doing great things. Some people that we saw were doing great things. I aspired. Mm. And my parents always said, education will open a door for you. You know, it's, it's a discipline <clears throat> of saying, I'm going to read on my own, yeah. uh, study on my own, yeah. 
and end up qualifying to go to university. I've found I don't have that discipline of working and doing and doing something else. You did it. Is yeah. it just because the hunger, uh, the way you were raised? It, it, it's, it's the hunger. But also, when you went to boarding school during my time, if you were younger, seven to eight was study time. Whether you want to study or you don't, you sit on your desk. You wouldn't choose to go and have fun. Mm. And the older you became, the hours increased. But also, the, the, the education system or the mission system that I went through taught us to be, to have a vision, to think bigger, to be wider, to see long term, to actually say, go out there and conquer the world. I remember in, in high school, at, at all level, each class always wanted to outclass the previous one. If the previous class had the third students and the third, all the third passed with the, say, 20 A's, you wanted to have 30. Mm. So each time you perfect, you competed with yourselves against the previous class. Mm. And that motivation is in me. Mm. I drive myself. I don't want to be driven by another. Do you see that motivation in our country right now? Do you see that drive in our country right now? That is one of my frustrations as a business executive. There's a general life attitude. People have an excuse even for failure. There's always a reason to explain something away. I don't see it. And I believe that correction in our economy, in our politics, in our administration is going to come out of men and women who resolve, who rise up and say, no, let's be different. And I believe that we can mm. be the difference that we want to be. Mm. You then joined um, Deloitte. Yeah. Uh, you articled there. You then became a partner. Yeah. Talk to me in the first yeah. instance, the struggle uh, as an article uh, yeah. clerk with uh, yeah. Deloitte and then becoming a partner. And I want to know in particular, yeah. what, is, what does it mean to be a partner? But take us through the journey right. of but, uh, the but, article. I, I think just to give you a background, Trevor, while you stayed university and in chartered accounting, because I had trained as a teacher and also because I had started accounting at A-level, I actually was a tutor of my classmates mm. because I was way ahead. Were you a senior student when yes, you I went? Was, okay. I, I mean, I, I'd gone through, I'd gone through three years of teacher's college, yeah. three years of teaching. Right, that, right. So those who were in, in my, my stream would have been four years younger than me. Mm. So I was a mature student, much more mature, but I actually had the professional teacher training and I could understand and explain concepts. So you're tutoring your so colleagues? I was tutoring my colleagues. In accounting? In accounting, in auditing, in other. And as a result, getting a job, Trevor, every vacation I worked, getting a job, in fact, I'd choose jobs, which accounting firm I wanted to work for. Mm. And I chose Deloitte mm. in Bulawayo. One for the record in that Deloitte had started a graduate program. You people like Ngoni, Kudenga, Kudenga, Willard, Zreva, Elton, Mangoma, uh, Clement, Ruzengwe, all those had been Deloitte's alumni. They were our tutors. So I could see a path mm -hmm. by watching them. How important is that to have <laughs> the Willard, Zrevas um, there as, as, as people inspiring you? Uh, and I'm talking particularly in the environment that we are in. Do our, pe do our young people have role models like that? How important Tre is that? Trevor, role modeling, life is about role modeling. If you walk around town, you'll find people that are putting either a man U, man city name, a number, number 10 for Pele or, or whatever. It tells you there is something that they see. Mm. We need to build role models in our villages, in our communities, in our churches, wherever we are, people that we aspire to become like them mm. and be able to go back to them. I can tell you today, I meet Ngoni at least once or so a month wow. for a cup of tea 
and I don't make an appointment. I simply go and say, Ngoni, I was in town. I thought I must call by and say, how are you? And it does the same with me. And therefore, it's a mentoring begin of some to sort. build one another. Yeah, yeah. And if I have a view that I want to bounce off, I can call any one of my role models and say, you know, Willard, how about? And I'll get free advice and, and genuine advice. And if I have a view, they're, they're prepared to say, you know what, your, mm. your, th your thought game is not right. Mm. If I were you, I would. Mm. And I find that usually, mm. usually helpful. It's important, yeah. um, um, Nyasha, because, and I agree with yeah. you, that each one of us yeah. needs mentors. Yes. We need mm. uh, people that we, we, we use as sounding boards, exactly. people yeah. that we, we lean on. Mm. Um, do you do that with, with young people? Do they come to you and, and you provide them? I, I, I do that. Yeah, I'll tell you, Trevor, as the, we were doing the research for the book, I went to meet, to interview chief executives. One, one chief executive of a listed company, the largest organization in this country, before an ICAS team said, Mr. Joe, when you came to lecture at the UZ, when you came in, in a suit, a neck and tie, very smart, carrying your bag, from there on, we as the accountants auditing team decided to wear jackets for lectures because they're emulating you. Wow. And oh, this is 40 more than wow. more than nearly 40 years ago. Mm. And the young man, now a senior executive, still remembers it. That is how we we the, the time you look for me it, it was inconsequential. Mm. I was just it was, you, you were just living my, your life. It was my usual life. I, as, a, as a chartered accountant, yeah. I needed to be in a in a striped but suit. But meanwhile, somebody smart. was watching you but and somebody uh, was watching. He yeah. says I had only one jacket. But you know what? I made sure that when I came to lectures, mm. I was smartly dressed in my one jacket. Mm. Well, I'll, I'll stop you yeah. there and we'll take a, yeah. a, a short break. Please yeah. join us after this short break. For me, it was an opportunity to bring in more people of my color into the profession. Boy, battles were fought in the background. Imagine getting free access to the Newsday, the Standard, the Zimbabwe Independent and the Weekly Digest for a full month. Well, you can. And all you need to do is download the Newsday e-reader app on Google Play Store or scan the Newsday QR code in any of the AMH print publications and start enjoying the quality content. E paper. Welcome back to uh, our conversation with Nyasha Joe, chartered accountant and retired business executive. So Nyasha, you get into uh, Deloitte. I want us to, as briefly as possible, the articles, how, how easy was it? I gather this is a tough uh, space to be in and then you become a partner. Thank you. Uh, Trevor, like I said, I got a place with the Deloitte in Bulawayo. Bulawayo, one, I'd worked there, but I'd also found a girlfriend. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> and, and that is life. Yeah. Who was uh, training as a nursing sister. Joined Deloitte, and I had a commitment to pass my exam first time. And I formed a study group with Todd Moyo. If you speak to Todd Moyo, retired executive now, he'll tell you, I held him by hand so that he couldn't go to every Sunday to a Highlanders match <laughs> in order for him to pass his exam. <laughs> he never forgets that. But that was, he was young. We had been to invest together. So we started and I passed my exam first time. And after passing my exam, the senior partner of Deloitte's, Alan, Alan Atkinson, came to Bulawayo. He had an interview with me and said, you know what, I like you. After speaking to me, he says, you know, I like you. If you resolve to stay, uh, once you finish your articles, you know what? I would recommend you for a secondment, either to the States or to the UK, 
for two and a half to three years, just to grow, to see things differently. That changed, that motivated me. One, somebody saw potential in me, recognized it, and uh, I also then resolved to prove I was competent and capable. Mm -hmm. And I rose through the ranks and went to, to the UK for three years and came back into Bulawayo. And uh, as soon as I came back, the UZ wanted an audit lecturer for second and third years. And the managing partner gave me a call and said, we need you in Harare. Mm. So for one year, I worked in Harare, committed every weekend to go to Bulawan. And I lectured at the UZ there. For a year? For 10 years. 10 years. Yes. In the end, the family, the family relocated to Harare. But articles are what are called Trevor, working under the watchful eye and the hand of a master. Like you do with art, or even with cooking or baking. Mm. You can only learn how to cook well, how to bake, how to play soccer, by watching a master kick a ball at you, you kick back. That's what articles are all about. You watch another, your job is assigned, it's measured, there's measured work, how I many hours, you are given a set of hours to complete a task, you are reviewed by your immediate senior and reviewed by a manager and by a partner because everybody's going to rely on your work. Mm. And therefore, that teaches you, you need to do it well because every other person is relying on you. But after that, and after that, you get certified. After that, you need to pass. You need to, to if you are degreed, you would need to complete, during our time, you needed to complete 4,000 measured hours of work mm. supervised by another. But also you needed to pass your exam. So passing the examination does not make you a chartered accountant. The hours alone don't make you a chartered accountant. It is a combination of quality reviewed measured work and passing academic achievement. When these two are put together, you have cooked or made a chartered accountant. Mm. We had a similar system, Nyasha, in terms of uh, apprenticeship. Yes. Um, electricians, boiler makers, uh, engineers, yeah. and that kind of... That discipline was there all across number of professions. We don't have that anymore. You, you, you know what? Sadly, at independence, and I'm going to be candid, there was a sense that uh, gray collar work, overall type work, artisanship and other are dirty. The white men made us do those things. In Germany today, they still do that. Absolutely. And they are the top engineering country, country mm. in the world. Mm. The Indians do it and they are running on technology like we can't imagine mm. it. Artisans. Artisans. Uh, you I, need to learn under the watchful eye of a master. Mm. And by the way, a study was done globally where the articles must be cancelled. And the research done globally proved that there is no better way to train a chartered accountant than to let them work with another in a supervised mm. manner, mm. measured work review. That's the best way of teaching. That's the people, best way to teach. We do it at home. Yeah, yeah. Talk, talk yeah. to me about being... Uh, a partner. Yeah. What does that mean? One, a, a partner is one. It's a it's a recognition. Yeah. You you became he, the first black partner. I was the first black partner in a, in a, in a big in a, in a, foreign a, firm in the in the in the global firm. Wow. It it is a recognition that he, one, you have met the standard. It's both academic, social, cultural. You know, you know, a wholesome. You, are, mm. you, you. We can trust you. Because in a mm. partnership, when you get into a partnership, remember, you are equal. Some guys may have been there twenty years or thirty or forty years. Mm. On the day you are admitted, you are all the same. You share joint and several liability, mm. and any decision you make will impact the other people. Mm. Any mistake you make does affect the other. Because people then don't see you, don't see the individual 
when you walk they see the fame mm. in you and it it demands integrity you need to think through anything you do the way you walk the way you drive even way those who drink the way you go and drink mm. is an image of the institution that you become so it's an honor it's a recognition mm. to become one but also for me it was an opportunity to bring in more people of my color into the profession boy battles were fought in the background in, talk talk, talk uh, to me about those battles what was, what was what was it like <clears throat> let me tell you 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 become the first black partner in a partnership of 25 people and we had just come out of independence and other even languages I, i'll give you a very classic example sorry to digress but i think it's important mm. deloitte celebrated uh, 75 years and they were given a shirt and a shirt and a tie to celebrate 75 years i was the most senior manager in that other office and then before i became partner he was wheeled into this audit room on a trolley and what it meant is each one of us would rise you take it, you pour tea get your sugar go into your office and you work and uh, one young man coming from an a group a school then actually thought i was a messenger i was Sorry a tea man i was a tea man and he asked me to pour tea for him and told me he didn't want sugar and i served him i was the most senior manager in the office in arare i served him mm-hmm. and then took my tea went into my office and then one young man one one white uh, fellow was more senior went to the young man and said do you know who that is he's our boss <laughs> wow so the young man came to the office and said He actually knelt down and said, "Say, I'm sorry. Wow. I mistook you for for the team man." And I said to him, I, I I rose from my chair, patted him on the shoulder and says, "Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry, son. These things do happen." I Let- understand. I wasn't even angry with the fellow. I knew he 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 thought I was a team man. Mm-hmm. And uh, I Wow. The, yeah. Wow. And those are some of the challenges yeah. that you face. Even when you went to you were a black senior, you went to client's uh, to place. A client. And when you get there, the client who then business was very wide. Looked at you and say and looked at your junior and said, "How can we help you?" They actually gave your junior an office and the junior would say, "Sorry, I'm not the senior. Mr. Joe is. I'm sorry." And so some of it is just that perception alone. We forget that, isn't yeah. it now? Yeah. But what it did for for us and then was you needed to go there. I remember my a friend of mine Mike Tapera he is late now. Mm. He has gone to be with the Lord. May he we, so I'll rest can, in peace. I can tell you yeah. we resolved in Bulawayo that he, what we called the, the touch of God. Mm. Do anything you do so well that even he who looks down upon you who have no reason to complain wow we called it a touch of god That's and we we had the test of a white you know in auditing or in accounting you review you write notes we used to say give your boss your senior only one piece of paper so that he, he will find you will find nothing to write on the piece of paper and so we the a weight test mm. as a way to up our game Mm-hmm. I knew Mike Tapera very yeah, well. Yeah. May he so rest in peace. Yeah. Up, upright uh, gentleman and this country needs people yeah. like uh, yeah. like him and, and like yeah. you. Um Yasha, you then went with you qualified your chartered yeah. accountant. You then decide to do an MBL yeah. with Yunisa. Mm-hmm. And I'm going there because you say it changed your professional life and your career focus. Why yeah. and how? I'll tell you. Trevor, I was very happy in 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 the profession. I was the head of the talent development training. I lectured at the UZ. I mm. trained CAs and really did it with passion, as if I was doing it for my own blood brother and sister. 
because it was good to do it. And I still feel the same today. Uh, I introduced corporate governance in this country. I would source the auditing. It was The first experiment was with me in this country. And today, every accounting firm offers outsourced internal audit uh, consulting. I introduced that in this country. But after spending those years in 1994, I just felt a little grayish and a little tired. But, you know, my, my, my intellectual zeal, mm. I resolved to register for, for UNISA MBL. But also looking at the role models, your people like Elton Mangoma, Willard Zreba, Willard Zreba uh, he, had start, he had started MBL. We met at winter school. They began to speak business beyond mere accounting. And a few others in Bunawayo and, and, and so forth. And I was enthused and I said, why don't you do it? I could afford it. I paid for myself. I could travel and I did. In my third year, when we were uh, with a strategy lecturer who was uh, an ex-military man, what strategies about the real source, in, the source was in the military. And he said, we, we, we started in groups and we're a group of seven. And he said, in a lecture, if all of you have spent all these four years at UNISA and you go back and do the same things that you've been doing in the last 10 years, then you will be damn stupid. <laughs> I didn't want to become stupid. <laughs> and let me tell you, our team of seven, when we came back, we all resolved to change what we did. Mm. What is it that you changed? I actually came back and said to Deloitte, you know what, guys? In six months, I'm going to leave you. Mm. I want to go out there and practice business. I enjoy what I do. I'm mm. earning well. Mm. I'm happy. But in six months, I'm going to leave you. Mm. It was sad. Mm. I enjoyed it. They enjoyed me. Mm. I had uh, broken, the, if you want, the, rush, the racial mode and proved that uh, uh, the color of your skin, your background, didn't matter, it's what you delivered. Mm. And I could see that recognition because I'd been assigned mm. responsibilities within the firm as a way to recognize I was a contributor like any other person. So I said, I'm, I'm leaving. In fact, I was going to set up a strategy consulting until Inos Chiwura. May his soul rest in peace. Said to me, we're looking for, there's an organization that are in distress. And I've known you through the Delta assignments as a manager and partner. Why don't you come to where I am on the board? Mm -hmm. And that's how I left and went into, into, into industry. Wow. There's, there's, there's a couple of things that you've said yeah. there, uh, Nyasha, yeah. which, mm -hmm. which I think have a, a, a lot of lessons for people out there. You are in the field. Uh, as a chartered accountant, yeah. you feel, I am tired. Yeah. I need to sharpen my sword. Yeah. You go and do something at UNISA. You yeah. come back and yeah. you are changed. Yeah. And when you're changed, you decide to do something completely different. Yeah. I get a sense that a lot of us need to do that. Yeah. Because the treadmill, mm. uh, the uh, red race, yeah. um, can dull you. Yes. Uh, and you need to get out some time and look mm. at things from outside. And looking at things from outside, particularly doing, doing a course, mm. uh, can be very different. I've done yeah. it. I did it a couple of times with yeah. uh, Oxford University. Yeah. And when you come back, yeah. you are fired up. You're different. You decide, my life is going to take a, a different turn. Do you agree with that? Fully agreed. You know what? I, for, for now, I use the accounting training. It's like a toolbox. It has given me a toolbox. And I can pick and choose what tool mm. I want to use, where I want to use it. Mm. But I see my calling well beyond the tool man. Mm. What is your calling? My calling is developing other people. Inos Chura taught me one thing. Yasha, if you want to do well, employ people that are smarter, cleverer, brighter than you. Because they're going to be working for you. 
and delivering for you. And we as a board simply see you. So go out there, Nyasha, recruit people that are better than you. When, when I have helped to change a life, Trevor, it gives me so much joy. How do you do it? Do, do you have a, a, set up, a set up system in which you nurture people, in which you mentor people? Do you have a process by which you do it or it's as I, I, it happens? I, in fact, it, it developed as I, was, as I was a trainer. That each time I come into contact with another, I, don't ass, I never assume you know. Mm. I will treat you and I as if we don't know anything. Mm. And we can learn and walk together. together. Be accommodative, mm. understand, and be, but also be able to be brutal. Mm. It's something that I learned on good to great. Many people are not brutal with reality. Mm. We pretend, even when you are drowning, you pretend it's going to be safe when mm. you actually are, are sinking. Be brutal with yourself, brutal with your, your, your mentee. Mm. E, to simply say, you know what, this doesn't work, this works. Be truthfully honest but also make time, give time, mm. spare time. It calls for more mm. spare time. Mm. And when you do, you get amazed. I've mentored in our church, Trevor. Nobody knew chartered accounting until I did. And today there are probably 30, 40 of them. Wow. And without knowing, they tell me, hey, it was you mm. who made me want to become a chartered accountant. Mm. Yeah, Nyasha, the, before we take a break, that yeah. to me says you and I yeah. have a role bigger than what our qualifications say we do, yeah. which is to lead by example. Yeah. Because you don't know who's watching. Exactly. You. I agree. You don't know what example you're setting. Trevor, I'll, I'll tell you a dream that I have. And I've, I've discussed it with one or two one or two colleagues, one of whom is Much Masunda. And now we're sharing it with the world. I have said, you have, your independence brains, your young professionals at 1980 are reaching retirement right now in the corporate world. Why don't we create an opportunity for them to go back and mentor? not just as board members, but be able to create a school that says, you, you don't come to learn theory. You invite 10 retired chief executives mm -hmm. who come and share their story and say, I am- This is like almost like them. an institute of some sort, exactly. a leadership institute. Yeah, exactly. Somebody says, I'm Willard Zreva, I'm Much Masunda. I'm sorry and so this is how I began. I'm Goni Kudenga. I'm Goni Kudenga. I'm, I'm Shambadzi. I am Fei Chung. This is how I created the Women's Invest in Africa. Mm -hmm. This is who I am. And this is how I did it. This is how I did it. And allow new board members, yeah, aspiring, even who are not on a board. Mm -hmm who come, who want to train and to become board members. They can read the theory, they can Google, but you can't Google experience. There's a school of experience that nobody else has. Sit and you allow, at the feet of elders a, 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 and feet learn. at the feet of elders and learn. Bring this, these professionals together. They have this 40 years of experience to simply spew out their experience, their work. That's my dream. What a and dream, what a dream. I'm going to hold you there. Fantastic dream. Allow us to take a, uh, a quick break. Please don't go away. Join us after this short break. Today, people go to a job and say to you, what is here to steal? <laughs> Just on day one, what is here to steal? We have young men and women, some who have never worked, some who have lived on thieved money, I'll call it thieved money all their life. And they are seen as role models. And the level of decay is frightful.
Welcome back to our conversation with uh, Nyasha Jo, re uh, retired business executive and a chartered accountant. I like your dream, um, and I, I hope it comes to, to fruition because there is um, a lot uh, that your generation uh, can 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 give to yeah. to, 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 the, to the younger people. One other thing that you are passionate about, Nyasha, is um, corporate governance, good yeah. governance. Mm. Uh, ethical leadership. When you look around um, this country of ours, how bad is the uh, death of uh, good leaders? L let me begin uh, in the positive. Generally, our people are historically very ethical, men and women of integrity. I recall Way back, Trevor, picking a tiki, a tick was two and a half cents, which had a, a red, a, a, a hair on one side, mm -hmm. and the three spears on the other. Picking it, taking it to my mom, and my mom asking, who lost a tiki? <laughs> Today, people wouldn't even. Do you recall the milkman where we bought these uh, coupons? in red or blue, who left milk at the door, and, and you, you dropped the, the coins two and, two and, two and a half cents into the, bottle. into the bottle, and it never disappeared all day. In, the, in whatever township that you went to, that is how our people were brought up. And when the Mondays were lost in the villages, and a, a, Mombe, a missing Mombe came to your village. Mm. It was a requirement to keep it. Take it to the deep tank and you announce it. And for six months you looked after it. And only then would do DDF or some other auction it. That was all integrity. Honesty. Brought, it was all brought up. That's how we brought up. Fields were never guarded. We needed no security to guard our fields. And nobody to stole from any other pay. You, you had the odd cases. So we were bred in our hearts. There is space for integrity, honesty, professionalism, doing your best. Sadly, today, people go to a job and say to you, what is here to steal? <laughs> Just on day one, what is here to steal? We have young men and women, some who have never worked, some who have lived on thieved money, I'll call it thieved money, all their life. And they are seen as role models. And the level of decay is frightful. Why? I believe that it comes from leadership. Okay. The leadership are not setting, living, leading by example. You don't say one thing and do another. Mm -hmm. And if you recall, if you, if you, if you add a uh, Trevor, your dad smacked you because he, want to, he wanted to protect his the name. name. In mm. fact, the name, mm. the name, the name at the shops and other, the name, the name was so important, was much more worthy than gold. And that sadly has begun to decay. But I believe that he, it just needs resolve from top leadership at every angle to say no, and we can make it right. And I believe that we can restore it. How? Pure, by a conviction that says it. From the top. From the top. This is not good for me. In fact, you know what? One book that I've been reading he called I I I India Unbound. Yes. India Unbound. The writer Dias says it. When an ordinary man is, it's sad. When a leader is, it's a disaster. Mm. Leaders need to know the consequences of what they say, what they do, mm. and the impact on a whole community, a whole nation, mm. a whole generation. And, and the damage, uh, Nyasha, that not bringing consequences yes. on those who are corrupt, yeah. mm. those who are tarnishing your name, mm. leads to 
negative consequences across the country. Huge. Huge. Very sad. You, you're hopeful that this can be done? I believe. Let me tell you. I believe that there is a collective effort. We cannot give up. Okay. Because by when we, when we give up, it is like he committing suicide. Mm. Or walking into a fire with petrol in your hands. Mm. Clean the petrol. We can't give up. We can't give up. Yeah. We can't give up. Mm. We can't give up or we'll have no nation. Mm. You're, you're also involved yeah. in the church. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start to you by, by I'm going to start there, go there by asking you. Mm. How is it? An account accounting is a science. Yes. Believing in God is a matter of faith. Yeah. How do you square that up? Um, each, each one of us, Trevor, in me and in you and in everyone, there's an element of emptiness which accounting can't satisfy, which money can't satisfy, which wealth can't satisfy, which sport can't satisfy. And that's why we still find it. I will give examples of soccer players with huge money. Mm -hmm. And you hear that they've committed a crime of drunken driving. Mm -hmm. They could actually hire a driver, mm -hmm. but they don't. There's an element of emptiness. As I grew up, I was taught. I wasn't compelled, but I mm -hmm. made a decision as I went on. In fact, there's a teacher, he's late now, Fanero Makotswana. He came to high school. We saw how he walked, how he talked, how he played with us. Went to play in, on the riverbed, you know, playing he sand games, play, playing beach balls and so. He looked at his life, his attitude, and he says to you, you know what? There's something in me beyond being a teacher. And uh, if, you, if, you, if you have it, you're going to have peace. Mm -hmm. I'm a very peaceful man. I may not be as rich, Trevor, but I'm peaceful. Mm. I have nobody hunting me for anything whenever. You don't owe nobody nothing. I owe nobody mm. except love. Mm. Yeah, and I know it. And yeah. I feel it right now. Yeah. You, you are working in building a community church in yes. Mabuku. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Trevor, I, when my children grew up, we left the church where we, where we used to fellowship. In Mabvuku. In, no, in, in Bari. In Bari. We left. And I'll tell you why. Because my, while my sons had been to university and young men, they were always seen as the Nyasha's children mm -hmm. and not in their own personal names. Mm -hmm. And we resolved to go to a small church in Mabvuku. Then they had no church. They were, all, were hopping from one school to another. We sat down together as a community, as a group. We bought a piece of land. And slowly, on a rocky ground. In fact, initially we complained that the, the city council was unfair. And it's really, I mean, are they being gracious and other? Do they understand we are, we are only but a few people? Mm. But you know what we did? Mm. My mother, my father was a builder. And as a boy, I learned, I learned how to build. We blasted the stones on that place. And the, our church is built of stone. Hmm. It's built of stone. We didn't have to go and buy bricks. Oh, wow. We blasted. It took years. We blasted, put a structure. But we have gone beyond and said, you know what? Let's have this as a community center. Trevor, I, and I can't just give credit to me. I and a few other people have run. Do you want to name them? Uh, I'm not going to name them okay. for now. Sure. But we've, we've, we've run two events in Mabuku at our church for the community on drugs and drug Abuse. problems. Mm. We have invited, make it open for the community. Invite people from the various churches and get professional persons, some medical doctors, just to come and talk to both parents and children what a drug does to you. Mm. That is my desire. Mm. So our dream on this community center is to one, one week to bring all one day to bring old people to a place 
where they can sit who are lonely in their own homes. They can come mm. together. Mm. All you need is a bit of water, a bit of tea leaves, some milk and some sugar. They have a cup of tea. And they spend two or three hours talking to each other mm. and they go back home. Mm. And when you do, you have made their day. We need to do lots of then, that. Then you, you, you also then get single mothers who really are struggling because we've, we've, built, we've built a lovely ablution block with showers and other. We began with that before we started putting the sanctuary. Allow these young mothers who want to go and shop or do something or have their hair done, mm. who can bring their children. The children are young. They can, somebody can babysit and they play and allow these mothers to be themselves. And bring couples once in a while uh, and from the community to learn parenting and other. That's how you so, build so, a society. So, so that the church, traditionally we have said the church is, is closed Sunday afternoon to Sunday morning. We want to open the house of God mm. for the full week. And, you know, during vacations, run a, a revision program. We have teachers in our church, teachers in the community. Invite teachers to run revision programs for the poor. Mm -hmm. There are many children with capacity who are not able to afford extra lessons. Fantastic. Invite, the, the, I'm a chartered accountant. I can teach all level mm -hmm. accounting and prepare children. Bring, invite them to the center. Allah. They pay nothing. Mm -hmm. But you know what? When you do, you change lives. We change society. You change society. You build a nation. We build a nation. Yeah. Tell yeah. me, yeah. Nyasha, we, we've touched on yeah. a number of things. Um, do you think the church is playing its role in this country in terms of nation building, fighting corruption? Is the church standing up and doing what, what the Bible says it ought to do? Not just the church. I'll tell you, Trevor, when we went on a research of this book, Bulawayo was very loud and clear and said, you as chartered accountants, you have said nothing on corruption. Mm. Very loud and clear. They even went further and said, when the president he had the march on, on zero corruption, says all professionals, lawyers, accountants, engineers, human resources persons in the church didn't come up. Why? By the way, I must confess, mm -hmm. it's, it's when it dawned to me as well that, that we, we should, should have, have seen been. that as an opportunity mm. of lighting a light mm. and going wild about it mm. on issues of no corruption. Mm. So it's not just the church. We have tended to say as long as I don't and don't speak about it, we need to be able to say no. Mm. And, 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 and speak loudly about it but also the church is community is us there are chartered accountants in the churches mm. there are lawyers in the churches we need to be light and salt in our churches in order to improve the the view the vision uh, the panorama mm. of the church as a society mm. yasha you've been involved you're a turnaround yeah. um, specialist and yeah. turnaround strategist mm. Talk to us now about the lessons mm. that doing this work has taught you yeah. about uh, companies and problems, uh, what, what this part of your life has taught you about business. I'll tell you, he, he, there's a young man, I'll mention his name, Fortune Chisango. He runs his own business. Him and I were, were appointed to head an organization that was in serious debt bad debt, serious debt. And I'll refer to Jim Collins on Good to Great. Mm. We must always face the brutal facts. Brutal say, facts will say to you, if there's no cash, there's no cash. Mm. And acknowledge it. Many times we pretend that it's okay. Mm. So it's understanding that cash and figures don't, don't lie. If there's no cash in the bank, there's no cash in the bank. Mm -hmm. Be able to go back to the employees and say, sorry, we can't pay you mm -hmm. because we have no money. Go to the board and say, we can't pay you. Mm -hmm. Go to the bank. You know, I remember you know, this meeting we met with the, all these bankers who wanted to, go, to liquidate this institution. We, we say to them, you know what? Give us a chance. If you give us six months, we can sort it out. Mm -hmm. But you know what? 
with your interest rates and uh, interest on interest and other. We won't be able to, to do it. We won't be able to do it. Let's face the brutal facts. The interest on interest, if you cut one, cut two, cut three, you, you get your capital and the reasonable interest will do it. Mm. Go to the regulator. You know what? The regulator has an interest in the business. Yes, survival. the regulator. We said the regulator. You will never be able to collect all your outstanding taxes mm. if you really insist where you say, I will put interest on interest on interest on interest and other. You will not have nothing. Mm. First, the brutal facts. Mm. Put it on the table. Mm. You know what we said that day? We said, we had our hands under the table holding each other in faith and saying, we think they will agree. In fact, we went in with no paper. By the way, I'd been taught a lesson by, by Biam. Siege. Siege. Siege Biam. I'd known him for a long time. He said, Nyasha, don't waste your time putting things on a piece of paper. Go and speak with your mouth. <laughs> you have more conviction as you speak than, Rather than, you, reading than, from than, a piece of than, paper. than putting a piece of paper. So we went, and in 10 minutes, we offered a program and said, if you did this, we will. And in six months, it was sorted out. Mm. So I've learned one is you must be meticulous. Some lessons, be meticulous. Mm. And for business, understand cash. Cash is the reality. Mm. Cash only does two things, Trevor. It works in or works out. And if ca more cash is working out, you know you're you working, you have a problem. So anybody in a recovery and other, understand the cash streams mm. more than anything else. Mm. Nyasha, you, you've been very successful. Um, you have an, you've had a, an illustrious life. And from your dream that you have, it looks like uh, uh, the best is yet to come. You are the first black prize student. And like we've said, the first black partner in a global firm. You have uh, uh, been a board member of uh, Econet, Bank ABC, RBZ, Zimplats, including AMH. Mm. Uh, you've been a colleague at, uh, at AMH. Um, I must ask you this. When, when you look back mm. at your life, mm. what are the things that have made you the success that you've become? I know you've spoken about your father. Yeah. Is, is, is there anything that the parents infused in you more than you've shared? What are th other things contribute to the upright man, honest, ethical, successful person that you become? One, our parents taught us hard work. And all nations, Trevor, or families or corporates who work hard with their hands. The mind, it's great for the mind to think, to imagine. But until you translate, until your hands mm -hmm get into work, we were taught as young people, boys, girls, to work hard, to give a day's, you know, a day's output. Honest. With, honest, without being, without being driven, to know I've delivered, I've done what I must do. So that's one thing I learned. Two, the, the, the Christian faith taught me a value. Mm -hmm. I, I always say there are three there are three equalizers. A faith in whatever faith you have, but for me, a faith in God is an equalizer. Whether you are educated, you are not, you are this or that is irrelevant. It is it is what joins you is your common belief. Mm -hmm. Just your grandmother. Your grandmother knows, Trevor, you are you are part of family. The fact that you have been to university is inconsequential. You're just for you, for her. Yeah, yeah, and you, education doesn't exist, does it? She loves you. It, does it exist? Does it mm, matter? No. Does it inf no. influence how you live together? Not at all. We're taught that. Two, one equalizer and on a, on a, on a, on a, on a said note is death. When we die, we, went in, we go into the same trays in a hospital. Mm. Whether you live in the most expensive houses. Whether then, you've got there, money in the no, bank. There are no mosheries in our wonderful homes. Mm. We go to Parinyadwa. Mm. We may not want to walk there during the day when we are fit and strong. But one day we're going to end up in a mochari before we go to Nyaradzo. It's an equalizer. And the last one is prison. I was arrested once for no reason in, 19, in 2004. Price controls. 
uh, price controls and other when I was an economic director. You know what? When you get into that place, <laughs> when you have surrendered your ID and you've been given these khaki shirts. You're all the same. You are all the same. A vagrant in the street, criminals and other, you are all seen as one. They are equalizers. I've learned that all of us, Trevor, are soul, spirit, flesh, and blood. We are given different endowments like flowers so that we can brown. Not all flowers are white or red or pink and other. But when there's a mix of all those, it gives the beauty that we call beauty. Mm. So if I'm a red flower, I must tolerate a white flower because we mesh together. Mm. That's what I've been taught. Wow, Trevor. that's powerful, yeah. that. That's powerful. Um, Nyasha, have you, what failure has humbled you in life? I've made bad decisions. I've, I've borrowed money more than I was able to service for my business and lost a property or two. And recognize that actually my decision was stupid. I either didn't apply my mind as well as I should have mm -hmm. and made the decision. That co and when, when such a decision happens, that just doesn't affect me. Mm. It affects my family. It affects those around me. Mm. So we do make such decisions. Mm. But the important thing for me is to be brutal about it. When it happens, yeah. is to be able to say, I erred. I'm sorry. Mm. I'm, I made a mistake. And pick yourself up. And okay. pick yourself up. And you, and you walk. Yeah. Yeah. Yasha, you know, you, you are a walking book, yeah. but uh, our viewers out there love books. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you to share at least three books with our viewers. The books that you've read that have made an impact. I know you you brought some books there. Do you want to, do you want yes. to share? You know, you know what, Trevor? I, mm. I thought you might be asking for yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is uh, this book here, The Fortune at of the, the Bottom, bottom of at the, the bottom pyramid. Of the pyramid. Yeah. It says change your business as a nation. There are industries in this economy, Trevor, that will never come back to life. New industries have are become. coming in. And when they have come, business must adapt. This fellow here, mm. he has taught business to say, if you are selling cement, the minimum bag you sell is, is 50 kgs. When you do it, you pay off a house. You, you want only 5 kgs of cement. Mm. And the, if you go home, most of our homes have cement that is dried. Mm. Allow growth is going to come from the dollar businesses. Yeah, at the bottom. At the bottom. The that's where your that's where your market is. That's where your mass market is. But regulations, rules, and regulations. There are more bed and breakfast houses now than hotels, Trevor, in this country. But the regulations even changed mm. to allow these people to survive. Instead, people go and close them out. And when you do, you you are bringing poverty to your community. That book says to you, Prehalad says to you, with time, business models change. change. The legislative environment must, must change. change. The environment, the government, and those are local authorities must be enablers because that has become the new business. Mm. The second That's book? one. The second mm -hmm. book, oh, it's interesting. I read, I got this as a gift. India, India Unbound, Unbound by Gujaran mm. Das. It's on my list of books to buy this year. Let me tell you, I was given this as a gift when I went to India, to Bangalore in 2003. I've read it over and over again. Anybody, in, in, in particularly those are uh, in, public, in public sector, chief secretaries, permanent secretaries and other, would, it would be good for them to read this book. It says to you, don't create a bureaucracy that's too expensive. India labored for years under a democracy 
under a bureaucracy. Mm. That was too Big. costly. Mm. You tried control and you control and you control. Regulations. And you control. Regulation, regulation. regulation. You put a layer on another layer <laughs> on another layer until the government is broke. Mm. The unbound says, let, let the free market economy, let the individuals. You know, Trevor, before, before dollarization in 2008, I went to Gwanda. I was, I was, I was a, a big man, chief executive, visited a branch, but wanted to buy bananas in the streets in Gwanda on the, on the Bed Bridge Road. I went to this lady. Before even the dollarization, before I even held a dollar except what I applied for in a bank, the lady said, I'm not going to sell you bananas with. She said, how are you paying? I had, I had Zimbabwe dollars. And uh, in Nessin de Bele, what you know, Queen can look, I'm a paper now. All I'm saying is, this is useless paper. This is an old this lady. Old lady. Probably she has never done economics. But she understood the economy had changed. She says, only US or RAND. Hmm. And in the end, I went hungry because I didn't have US. Wow. What it says is, nations, communities, times change. Hmm. India unbound says to you, today, and what he advocates is identify where your core competence is mm. and excel. Indians, even before virtual, started booking airlines from India for, for BA yeah. and for all international virtually. Mm. You didn't need to see mm. a booking office. And this was done not with, with no cost in a house in India. Before the mobile phone was even working. Mm. Indians are technologically faster, smarter. Allow them free space. Create an environment that allows then them. Then you'll see the innovation coming and, up. And, 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 and bound. And mm. bind. Allow people mm. to be themselves. And in this country, Trevor, under what we are going today, if our people were not as creative, would have had disasters like uh, of hunger and starvation. But Zimbabweans are Imaginatively creative. creative. But imagine, you know, imagine you, if they were unbound. I want I wanted to imagine. Do you remember us do you remember us queuing up to buy airtime from Econet mm, many years ago? Mm, mm. And you know what Econet did? They simply said go and open an yeah. Econet shop. Even in my village in Imberengwa, five thirty two kilometers from Harare, I can go and buy airtime. Mm. Imagine if Econet said oh, you can only come and buy head office. Exactly. <laughs> That's that's the yeah, binding. Absolutely. Your your third book? My third book is Good, good to, great. to Great. I know you love this book. Oh, that you know Jim Collins. That that good good is a, good is an enemy of great. Mm. That's good is yeah. an enemy of great. What when you are always at your best, you are always at your weakest. Mm. I was an athlete. When you really are running fast, all you need is somebody to to stretch a hand and you fall. When you are at your best you are at your weakest, mm. and therefore you must continue to seek for more than. Mm. And what what you call the flywheel effect mm. begins slowly Strength. and begins to run yeah. and runs and runs. And by the time it goes, mm. you can't stop it. Mm. But also it says, watch your detail. Mm. Understand the brutal issues. Understand the issues deeper. By the way, I had the privilege of attending training on this book by Jim Collins in Colorado. Fantastic. Face to face. Fantastic. Uh, Nyasha, you, uh, you know, what can I say? You've done lots of work, but I think the, for me, the crowning uh, achievement, um, the uh, legacy piece that you've done with celebrating ICAS is, is one of those uh, pieces of work that you've done that will remain standing long after you are gone. Trevor, if you read chapter 11 and chapter 12, we compared ICAS to 100-year-old companies, your Coca-Cola, Tabasco, Twinnings of London, the, the All Blacks of Australia. We're comparing the ICAS attributes against the 100 club companies. And it ranks beautifully. Beautifully. Oh. When you read it, and any organization or individuals can rate themselves against mm. those standards. Mm. And uh, it's, uh, for me, it was a pleasure, a joy. I learned from it in ways amazing. 
Yasha, thank you for creating the time to, to, join, to join us. Uh, we appreciate what you do and what you're doing in the church uh, with young people mentoring. We appreciate what you do with the Institute of Chartered Accountants, uh, building and creating, uh, building, uh, you know, ethical uh, leadership within our institutions and within the Institute of Chartered Accountants. Um, so thank you so much for creating the time to be with us. We wish you all the very best. Mm -hmm. Allow me, Nyasha, now to turn to our viewers who are all over the world who watch this show every Monday. Remember, we are out uh, every Monday at 7 a.m. Central African time. To ensure that you don't miss out on any of these conversations, please click onto this red button and subscribe. Remember to like and to share. Uh, we've also created a website where our podcasts sit uh, for your listening pleasure. Thank you so much for watching. We view, we read rather your comments um, and we appreciate the suggestions that you make as to who the next guest ought to be. Until next time, thank you and cheers to you all. <laughs>